All right, folks, Swedek here from Melvani. And as always, it's wonderful to have one of my favorite, the most diverse heavy metal icon of all times, Devin Townsend. How are you doing, Devin? I'm good, man. Good to talk to you again. Wonderful, man. Now, first of all, before I start the interview, I just got one simple question for you, which somehow fans don't seem to get an answer. Go. And that is, why is Devin Townsend so fucking awesome? <laughs> well, because of the people around me. How's that? Oh, well, that's that, that makes sense. <laughs> that's true. I mean, you know, same with you. How come you're awesome, man? <laughs> that's because I'm talking to you right now. Ah, it's... This is good. We just keep, we're all passing it off because none of us can take compliments, right? <laughs> Nonetheless. Oh, I, I appreciate it, man. I, uh, I'd i like to view myself with the same lens as opposed to uh, uh, the one that I tend to view myself with, which is you're not doing enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. I totally get that. Now, you unleashed failure, you know, a couple of days ago. I'm sure you must be stoked to see how the fans are you know, perceiving it. So any, any, you know, any sort of feedback you've received so far? Yeah. I mean, this album was a real experiment for me. Like I think we may have talked about in the past, everything that I yes. do, it has very little to do with the music itself. It's more to do with the process and transcendence. The process of this record is crucial to my growth. I think not only as a musician, but also as a person mm -hmm. in that it required me to sort of step out of my comfort zone and participate with other people in ways that typically are just, it's not something that I uh, have wanted. So to let that go in a lot of ways has created a record that I think is really strong, but um, is also not confusing to me, but, but um, it's not uh, as directly uh, involved with my personality and trip right. as it has been in the past i mean it still is obviously because i wrote the majority of the stuff and the lyrics and all this but because there's other people in there mm -hmm. it's um it's something that i was interested to see how the fans would react to it and it seems overwhelmingly that people dig it which is really cool and I, uh, you know i'm i'm proud of everybody who involved with making this record and i'm proud that we managed to get to a point where we could make a statement like this but uh I also look forward to the future and making, you know, the symphony that's a, a freak out and, and all this sort of stuff. Overwhelmingly, man, I seem to like it. Definitely, because this is music without boundaries, without barricades and without limits. I mean, every album I hear of Devin Townsend Project, it always uh, shows another side of itself. And Transcendence is, I feel, no exception. What was probably, let me say, once your backing band has kind of now become something as large, as majestic as the legacy that you have created. And the album just proves that with just one single listen. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, you know, it's as we talked about in the beginning of this conversation, you know, you're made who you are mm -hmm. by the people around you in a lot of ways. And I think that you can you can give yourself um a pretty good idea of where your life is at by taking a good look at the people that are close to you right. and right in the past 10 years has been a lot of um transformative changes in my personal life and the end result of that is i've got a bunch of really good people around me and mm -hmm. and to not um to not utilize them or allow them to be a participant, an active participant in something like this, is it says more about me than it would about them. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And so it's that's just that was just, just the next step as a person. It's like you gotta try and put aside some of this, you know, narcissism and, and try and grow a bit, right? Definitely. It's it's good to see probably the first album where where your ideas and your thoughts uh, have probably been shared with other members. And and because you're, you're a kind of musician who has a vision, a plan in mind, a sort of a sketch, a direction where it should take. But on this album, it's something where you have uh, explored a lot due to inputs coming in from Ryan or from the other guys. And that may be one of the reasons why this album is kind of becoming a deeply complex and heavily passionate uh, sort of a metal album that probably for me feels much stronger than Z2, uh, you know, preconceived, let's say, I don't want to call it as a fucking heavy album, though. Yeah, I don't know, I get that. And I think that, 
I think that that's what, as a as an artist, I'm looking for. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That uh, that passion. Without that, right. there's no there's no way really for the audience to participate in it because it's it's like drinking you know a bunch of cola. Mm-hmm. It's it's sort of empty calories in a way, right? And I think that um, you got to get to the meat of it. In Z2, it was a very, very challenging period for me because I was um, very tired and overstretched. But there was still an angle with the Sky Blue album that that I could dig into, and that was death at the time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, because you're depressed and because you're tired, it's much harder to um, engage in that creative process without it just being like exhausting right so when it came time for two or for transcendence as with every record i spent a good deal of time prior to the, the to the inception of it going well where am i mm-hmm. what are we going to do now what is the compulsion and which way is it pointing and i think one thing that was important to me is i want to i want to uh, as much as i want to please myself and as much as i want to please you know the band i also want to please the audience sense and I think that um, abandoning the sound that I've been doing for so many years without really putting some effort mm-hmm. into finding an angle that could make it um, still interesting just it seemed like the wrong move so I really tried to get to the root of what mm-hmm. this music meant what this group of people meant what it means in relationship to the rest of my career and what it's going to mean to the future of my career and that's when the concept became clear that it's about your own need for control and your own lack of desire to share and all these sorts of things and that became the um that became the the theme that was much easier to become passionate about than than death to right be fair. right it's, it's 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 a very strong uh point you know which you made i can you know, i can recall songs like higher or even stars even offer your light where i felt that that on this album, the strongest point is probably the the, the vocal side of it. Uh, it may be odd for me to say that 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 the project has always been about you know those massively entwined structures, but I feel it's kind of safe to say that that this this album Transcendence is easily the most catchiest recording of your career. Although for me, as always, you've always been one of the I, best and the most diverse vocalists in the scene. I appreciate it. Thank you, man. I mean. Singing is also a nightmare for me, and and I don't mean to sound like everything is like some sort of crazy existential drama, though it probably is. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I I don't, I never wanted to be a singer, and still don't particularly want to be a singer. It's it's um, one of those things where after a while, when you realize that you've got a vision, when you realize that you do have a passion to say something that is emotionally very significant to you. Mm-hmm. It has to be right. It has to be a certain thing. And over the years, I've developed the capacity to make my voice do what I want it to do in ways that I can't really explain to other singers or get other people to do. I try and involve different women to uh, help me with the parts because that's something that I can't physically do is, right. is that, you know, the, the female side of the of the vocal spectrum. But, man, it's like pulling teeth, the singing thing. And it's uh, <laughs> as uh, years go on it certainly doesn't get easier i saw a video clip on blabbermouth a couple of months back of rainbow and they have some new singer new singer and yes the guy was fantastic like and he was great like just like a legitimately good like schooled singer and i think to myself fuck i couldn't do that in a million years <laughs> I, I just try and shriek in tune and hopefully it uh you know, 60% of the time it works, right? Absolutely. I, I mean, do you actually follow Blabbermouth? Because you're, you know, one of those musicians who probably isn't, doesn't really give a damn about what's happening on the metal scene with all these metal injection, Blabbermouth, and so on. Oh, I, 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 I very much do. I mean, I think the thing is, and it's funny because I think it's become sort of in vogue mm-hmm. uh, to say, as a person who plays heavy metal, like, oh, I don't <laughs> like that. I don't like metal and I don't follow the scene. I don't know anything about computers and I don't know how to tune my own guitar. Like, I think that's like more of a, a fashion statement than it is a reality. I mean, dude, I've been playing, been playing and listening to heavy metal since I was 13, you know, like, like 
Yeah, I very much like it, and I very much do follow. I don't read the comments specifically on stuff. <laughs> That's that. right. That's where the but, damage happens, isn't it? It really is, because it's like, and I think that you're a glutton for punishment if you choose to read them, because it's... <laughs> You know, and the more the more attention my work gets, mm -hmm. the more vitriol gets aimed at it, just because it's sticking up. You know, it's like when things are below the surface, there's no reason for people to have like a like a investment in disliking something. But I think in a certain way, the the, the fact that I you know uh, have become more visible, mm -hmm. and the fact that that has brought a lot of distractors or detractors in a lot of ways. That's maybe just one of the um, the, the bonus prizes of uh, of being able to continue doing this in this particular day and age. Right, All right, right. That's very well said. Now, since we are talking about the fans, Devin, this is definitely you know be, you know it's not uh, a, an extremely heavy album as how one you know some section or some portion of your fan base would would expect. Then you have the another section of your fan base who love this side of Devin Townsend. So we have uh, probably a common angle between those who love and those who won't. So did you kind of thought about it once the album was kind of done and you know maybe slight thought as to how the extreme side of Devin fans would perceive this album? Yeah, well, I mean, I think you, you, you take that into consideration and you try, like I said earlier, to be as um, aware of your fan base as you can be and try and cater to them in the ways that you find you're able to. But mm -hmm. overriding that is really um, you have to be comfortable with it yourself. And if you're not, then regardless of whether or not it, it caters to the more extreme fans, it's not coming from the place of your creative strengths right. that draw people to it in the first place. I mean, I think that... Um, it's as heavy. It's heavier than I expected. Even wanted to be, mm -hmm. to be honest. Well, just even though it's not extreme in the ways that you know old school strapping fans would want it. Clearly, it's more extreme than I probably wanted it's, to. In it's some more ways. extreme uh, regarding the amount of passion, precision, and the performance utilized with it. Well, here's another angle to look at the reason why it is the way it is, is mm -hmm. because I included the guys in, to a certain extent. Right. I mean, it's a reflection of what the five of us together like sound like. That's what it is. It's not like, you know, Ryan plays, he plays sort of progressive drumming, yeah. right? And, yeah. and if I ask him to play like Gene, it's not going to be authentic. True. And, you know... Dave is very precise with his guitar, and, and you know, and, and if I ask him to play like the Ramones, it's not going to happen. If I right. ask him to play Motorhead, it's not going to happen. Brian on the bass, too. I mean, poor guy has to learn all this complicated stuff, and all he really wants to do is, like, play ACDC records. <laughs> so it's like, you know, it's, it's, I think within the parameters of the, of the concept itself, Right. It it just it just it is what it is, and it's it's a direct representation of these five people, and that's where its success lies. And so, whether right. or not that appeals to people that, for the most part, we've never met, it it can't uh, it can't influence my feeling on the record. Mm -hmm. That being said, you know, uh, the this Devin Townsend project and what I've done with with this album is is this moment you know and and there's um things sort of boiling in me right now that want to come out that are that are much different than anything that i've done with dtp and anything that i have been doing with this group of people i mean i've been on a leash for so many years right. after children and after sobriety and all this stuff and trying to make sure that i don't do anything that i'm uncomfortable with with and all yes. this sort of stuff which has been has resulted in a lot of really cool work but i'm also at a point now where i think i know myself a lot more, more. and i'm a lot more confident in my opinions that i think when i go to do the symphony i think it'll be a lot more extreme than uh, than i had ever anticipated right absolutely that very well said devin devin you're taking this album on road for probably you know with a great lineup you know you got bd bam you got leprous and it, it's it's good to see uh, you taking the same lineup to to europe as well except bd bam is doing their own shows in uk so you have a packed 
year ahead. How many songs would fans get to hear from you know Transcendence on tour? Well, it depends on the actual show, right? I think what typically happens with each tour is you're asked to prepare three or four different versions of the set. Mm -hmm. One that is, is, you know, would work for a 60-minute slot, one that would work for a 70, and then one for a 90, and then the encores and all that. So I think that um, as we've been going through rehearsal, we've been trying a lot of hats on, so to speak. And uh, there's a healthy dose of transcendence in each set, but... To be fair, there's 25 records worth of things that right. um, that uh, have equal passion put into them at the time. So, how do you make decisions? Make. <laughs> it's a very very challenging thing to do. But I think that what you end up doing is just trying to get a cross section of things that work, things you know that work, new stuff, sort of obscure stuff, and then try and make it flow. It's a it's a it's a challenge, like making it a is. good set. It on jam. It definitely is. Devin, uh, before we conclude, how about you describe the sound of transcendence in just one sentence? Interesting, complicated, emotionally elusive, mid-tier, progressive heavy metal with a question mark. <laughs> Such statement only Devin can make. Thanks a lot, brother, for sparing some time. You know, always a great, well, great time having a chat with you. Now, I've just got to figure out how to get failure out of my head. I just don't know how to get that done. But thanks a lot. You have a wonderful, wonderful day ahead. Thank you so much, brother. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Bye,